Hi everyone, and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I'm Peter, and with me is Mario. What's up, guys? And we've got Connor. Hey, everyone. Let's talk about iZombie, Season 2, Episode 9. The episode is called Cape Town. Uh, full spoilers, as always. Um, IMDB has let me down. Uh, Boom. Yeah. It simply says, add a plot, where the plot synopsis should be. And It wants you to add your own. I'm not, I'm not the, I mean, I'll say my own, but I'm not, I'm not adding it in. Like, fuck them. Like, IMDb can take care of themselves. I'm having no part in it. But yeah, so this was the superhero <laughs> episode of iZombie, which... Uh... Now, I'm not complaining, right? But I feel like the writers are thinking of more and more ridiculous brains for Live to Eat. Because <laughs> I don't feel like there's any other way they would have wrote in I want to be superhero into this show. I learned the fact that they wanted Liv to act like a superhero for an episode. <laughs> no, they did say uh, there was an interview towards the start of the season where last season they kind of took little things and go, oh, that'll, that'll be a brain for that. Whereas this one, they kind of picked a thing and went, this will be the stereotype for the week. Yeah. And just went through a checklist and went, how can we fit this in? Well, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun this season. Um, and this episode was no exception. Yeah. I was ridiculously entertained. This is one of my favourites. Yeah. I, I think what helps it is not only was she acting like differently like, as she always does, but even the direction and the, the music and the stuff. Music, like yeah. it, There was yeah. a lot of low angles looking up at her. She was standing heroically, like making her speeches and um, all sorts. Yep. So, Sneaking into warehouses and whatnot. Yeah. I feel like this episode was better than Arrow. <laughs> I'd be time. hard pressed to argue. Do you know it's funny yeah. you say that? Because... Uh, you said that before I watched it, and as I was watching it, I was sort of comparing it in my head, and I legitimately think this is a better visual style than Arrow, because Arrow's got this sort of weird uh, muted colour palette, where everything has to look kind of grimy, whereas this was very vibrant. Yeah. Well, it also just felt more like a movie. Like, you know, the part where she sneaks into the warehouse and she's underneath the, uh, the truck? Mm. But like it, the way it like, like kind of moves into that shot... You feel like yeah, where she's on the roof, segment. and then and yeah. then and then she's the truck comes past, and she's not there, and then she's underneath. Right, and she totally Batman's out of a scene as well. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> this is Clive Babineau. He'll be your Jim Gordon. <laughs> I'm not your Jim Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. He's a, he's his own man. <laughs> uh, it was. I think the bit that got me just the first time when she comes out when she's on the brain, and she just comes out in that. It, that, the the voice that she puts on for it, and it's just like, oh, this is gonna be good. Yeah, and Ravi's immediately just excited. He's it's, like, it's, he's he's us in that scene. He's yeah. just there going, yes, yes, I want to see this. <laughs> I just love when he goes like, so uh, no space rack then. <laughs> yeah. uh, so good, so good. Um, so yeah, the episode was a lot of fun. Uh, all that stuff with the superheroics was good, but it does land her in a bit of bother because. At the end of the episode, Clive basically splits up with her as uh, detective partners because she kind of fucks up the investigation by sneaking into a place when cops aren't meant to do that and it kind of nullifies the right to arrest anyone or, you know... Do anything, really. Yeah. So, uh, repercussions for the next half of the season. So um, She's going to have to tell him soon, just to get back back on side. She will. She's going to have to tell him how, how this stuff works. Just yeah. So and how she hadn't got the, the control. Hmm. She might just go on her own and then run into him. Eventually they'll lead into something happening where he finds out. Yeah, I think that'll probably happen for a few episodes. Yeah. But um, then she'll realise she can't do it on her own. Because it, it. it was a little bit poignant when she actually, uh, like, <laughs> when, when he says it to her and she stops and goes, wait, no, this is, this is my only thing. Like, yeah. and I feel kind of sad for her because it is kind of the only thing that gives a purpose because she is the undead. Yeah, and, and especially because with the uh, this whole situation with uh, Major and that zombie he's trying to kill. That's yeah. kind of the theme with that situation where she's kind of pointing out that she essentially has sex for food and yeah. how terrible that is if you really it's think about grim, it. really. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, th th that whole subplot in this episode was actually really good because it... I mean, you know, Major... Major's not actually... has actually been fine for the last, like, three or four episodes. Uh, we were complained a little bit in the first, you know, chunk of the season that him hunting down the zombies was kind of the least interesting part, but that's put a really in, like a really unique spin on it, where the zombie's about to commit suicide anyway, right? And he has to talk her out of it, and it's actually kind of nice, like sort of touching a 
Bottle it was like lot. when when we first saw him breaking the window and he had the the needle gun out. I was like, oh, this again! Like, haven't we seen this this thing enough times now? And then they just did something nice and new with it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah and added, I, added more development for him. Like the whole conversation about, oh, you do all of this for your girlfriend. Oh man, she must really like love you and appreciate you. Know, she doesn't actually know. It was just it was a good moment for for every for just him all around. Yeah, and I think it adds adds more layers to the the show as well. Because it just yeah. added the sadness to the zombies that, even though obviously you would be in a really sad place, the show has so much fun with it that you don't really think about it all the time. Yeah. And uh, that really pointed out. So when when he's freezing her, because he's been freezing them in the hopes that the cure's coming, um, and she's like, "Look, don't wake me up if there's no cure." Like you know, and she makes some promise, and it's, it's just a really little poignant moment, and you know, I like that. Um, Speaking of the cure, though. Yeah, uh, so Ravi's got the voiceover at the end where he's basically saying, "Yeah, we're yeah, it's not going so well." Um, but the music was really good, and it was ramping up as he was searching for this, you know, this buried body that we found out about with the utopia in it. Yeah. Um, well, of course, it cuts to Lev standing on a rooftop like a vigilante. Yep. <laughs> <It's> perfect. <laughs> Do you know what? I would I would be so cool. With uh, Liv just being on superhero brains for the rest of this show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that was cool. I like when she uh, when she the guy shoots her, mm. and he's like, "Oh, you know, what did you think was gonna happen?" Then she flips out and turns into zombie mode, and the guy just freaks out. Yeah, it works. I, That's like a superpower thing. Yeah, because I was yeah. worried, I was worried about her at first. Right, I was like, "Wait a minute, she's not actually got any powers in that. She's fucked if anything happens." And then she went in zombie mode, and I'm like, "Oh, wait, she, she does kind of have a power." <laughs> Yeah, she's got a lot of ego. Yeah, and she also, you know, can't be killed, which is nice. But all of a bullet to the head. It's nearly happened. Yeah, much dead. But then our evil villain for the season, saved a her. crime boss. Yeah, yeah, Mister Cheery. Yes, Cheery. He is. Just <laughs> remember, makes him so scary. Just remember not to wrong, because he'll put your family on Skype and kill them all. <laughs> Kill them all in front of you. No, 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 no. It'll make you kill yourself in front of the family. Yeah. And kill the family so they don't know about it and they can't talk to anyone. That's good. Peter's taking notes. That's kind of scary. I'm just remembering the scene from like three oh. episodes ago. Give I'm me just in the shop. Yeah. <laughs> just... there, there was even the thing in this episode where Clive mentions how they never get any of his men for murders because he kills them all like yeah. before they can... Mm. Be That's the fire doing anything. anything. Yeah. yeah. Kind of makes you wonder why anyone's signing up to work for him, doesn't it? That's true. If this reputation has got about that he kills people <laughs> so they can't talk, he's like, well... Maybe he offers a lot of money. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's like a Russian roulette. Like, every so often he'll pick, and you don't know if it's going to be you that gets picked mm. to go on the murder assignment. But if you do anything else, you're kind of safe, and you get a shit ton of money. But you might run to the fog. <laughs> what did he say? He's like, tonight the fog is... Uh, tonight the fog is... I can't remember. Rolling in with justice or something No, I thought like it that. was thick. It's the uh, thick, thick, thick with justice. <laughs> Good times. Uh, See, here they're doing it on purpose. On Arrow, not so much. Yeah, it's fine when it's intentional because yeah. they're all put on the voices, the over the top stuff, and it's just great. Yeah, it was fun. This was, was a lot of fun. Uh, this was our mid season final, essentially, because it'll be back after Christmas. Um, but that's a review of this week's Eye Zombie. <laughs>